I am pleased to welcome you to day two of the 40th annual SEC Small Business Forum. While we are all looking forward to the day we can hold such events in person again, I hope that this format enables more people to attend without the cost or hassle of travel to us here in Washington. Regardless of our location, I must still give my disclaimer, which is that my remarks reflect my views alone and not necessarily the views of the commission or my fellow commissioners. The fact that this forum has convened now for four decades speaks to the evergreen nature of small issuer and investor concerns. Although we at the SEC have made some strides towards increasing our awareness of and focus on this important group, not least of which has been selecting our first advocate for small business capital formation, Martha Leg Miller, there is clearly still work to be done. As an SEC commissioner, my duty is to promote and further the SEC's mission, which includes facilitating capital formation. At an absolute minimum, this means that I must ensure that our rules do not unduly and unjust, unjustly prevent capital formation. I worry, however, that many of our existing rules do exactly that. At a recent meeting of the SEC's Small Business Capital Formation Advisory Committee, the committee members took up for the second time the concerns of underrepresented founders. The message that comes through loud and clear is that founders get funded by their networks and regulatory barriers that prevent founders from obtaining capital from their existing networks may result in those ideas not getting off the ground. That is, if we are concerned, and I am, that the difference between a good idea getting funded or not getting funded is the difference between whether a person has friends who are wealthy or not, we need to look at how we can open up investment opportunities to more communities throughout our country. Capital raising is obviously of interest to founders and small business owners, but investment opportunity also affects would-be investors. For years, it has been clear that one of the greatest opportunities for wealth building has been in the private markets. Many non-public companies have been growing in value and have delayed going public or have not gone public at all. When we look at underrepresented groups, we must also, also look at the networks of would-be investors and whether we are unjustly preventing many Americans from building the kind of wealth that establishes intergenerational stability and a firm footing in the middle and upper class. I also have a duty to protect investors, and I have no interest in tearing down valuable protections. I do, however, have a strong interest in finding ways to ensure our markets are not only deep, liquid, and transparent, but also inclusive in the opportunities they provide. This may mean expanding the definition of accredited investor, opening the way for the development of funds that would permit retail investors to invest alongside and on equal terms with institutional or accredited investors or other structures we have not yet considered. I know many of you are in the trenches dealing with these questions of how to fund your businesses and how to reach more investors. My door, virtually for now, is open and I welcome any insights you can provide. Thank you for being with us today. I hope we can work together to solve some of these evergreen problems, especially as small businesses recover from the difficulties of the last year.